Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Dream Big Today. My name is Debbie, and this is Saturday, June the 10th, 2023. What a beautiful day. It's raining here at my home, and it's just, it, it, oh, man, doesn't it sound so good to hear the the roll of thunder and, and the the rain coming down, watering your flowers and grass. Just kind of wish we'd have mowed yesterday. Would be, would it, it would have even been better. But anyway, if you would put your prayer request and your praise reports in the uh, in the chat box, that would be great. We will be really glad to and honored to celebrate your your praises and and your concerns too. And so let's get started into this. And uh, just, I want to start with my devotion, <clears throat> and it's a really good one today, and just a little bit of it, and it's just a reminder, we know all of this stuff, every time we read, I read my devotion, well, I know that, but you know what, it's always a good thing that, uh, to be reminded let's see, Eileen says I'm echoing, well, Eileen, maybe you might need to I don't know if it's me or not. I haven't changed anything. So maybe you need to go out of Facebook and come back in and maybe that will change that. So uh, anyway, I'm going to jump right into my devotion. It says, your word tells me to cast all my cares on you for you care for me. So cast it to the great catcher. He, he can catch everything that you're having difficulty with. You can just barely lob the ball. We just watched the OU girls win the world championship. Well, you know, I, I can't throw a ball like those girls can. But let me tell you, it doesn't matter how I throw it. He can catch it. I don't have to be really good at, 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 at that. He, he, he made me, he knows, he knows how to catch anything I need to throw to him. As I release those worrisome things, I relax in your presence and breathe a sigh of relief. I need to keep doing this through the day. And sometimes through the night, you know, the nighttime is whenever everything just comes at you. You feel the walls closing in because you can't see anything around you. And, and that's when you're, you, you, you can let those things spin out of control. The Bible tells us not to worry, but he does tell us to let him have all of your cares. He's always awake and always ready to catch your cares and your burdens. So I'm going to stop with that and we're going to jump into to the reading today. <clears throat> we are in 1 Kings chapter 7. And, you know, I, as I've read and read and read over the years, and, and I've got, you know, of course, you know me, I've got lots of notes, but it, it was kind of different to me in a way today, because as I'm looking, Solomon, and we know because we've read, built a palace for himself, took him 13 years to complete the construction. It's so interesting that, you know, we see, we see as wise as he is, where his heart is, because uh, this statement tells us that it took nearly twice as long as he built the house of God. So, he, but but it was a it was something that they were all going to be gathering to. I don't, I'm, you know, I can't, you know, defend or say anything <clears throat> about this because I didn't live there. I don't know what all of that was like. But it did take him longer. Now, this we, he used he used the best of everything, and I feel like that Solomon used the best of everything in everything he did. I think that whenever we're doing our uh, work and and whatever that looks like for you, we should always give our best. We should always uh, whatever whatever it is. You know, you don't give your your last tenth of your tithe. Give your first tenth, and then over and beyond. That would be the best. The cream of the crop is always on top. So, to, in today's money, Solomon's net worth would be like two point one trillion dollars. 
So there's a there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on here. And as we read through it, we can just think, oh man, I don't know anything about architecture. I don't know anything about any of this. But you know, as I walk through a completed building, I think, oh wow, look at this, look at that. You know, it's just amazing to me. And sometimes we have to look at things through the eyes of somebody else. And so when I had my little grandson. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we took him to the Sam Noble Museum in Norman, just right off of the campus of OU, for the dinosaur exhibit. And it's, it's really, really big. And as we walked in here, here's this little five-year-old boy, and he looked up, and all he could say is, wow, Mimi, I didn't know there was so many dinosaur bones in one place. And he just looked, he just looked like a little ant on the floor when I stepped back and took this picture. And I'm thinking, you know, the amazement of, of him in something like that would be our amazement for this as we read through this and see how all of the specific details and we know everything that's written means something that uh, this is this is a picture of what heaven's going to look like and if you look in uh hebrews i think it's chapter nine it would have really probably been super cool if i would have had that marked in my bible it it talks about uh, it talks about the the temple and in the palace and all of that kind of stuff so if we study this and see what all of the placement ever all of the things that was was made when we get to heaven we're not going to be so much surprised as oh yeah that's what that's i read about that i didn't know it was going to be that grand i didn't know all i could use is my imagination but wow that is way bigger than what i thought you know we can be we can just get our minds set in the heavenlies uh, walking into solomon's building his palace was like walking into a forest because we see we he talks about the cedar pillars and the and the beams the cedar beams and you can just imagine whenever you're whenever you walk into well best i can imagine say is is when we chop down a cedar tree christmas time you you see the the or smell that that scent of the cedar and there's just something that's just amazing for that and you know you just you just want to sniff it they make cedar wood to line your closets you know it's just it's just a a great fragrance um and so then let's go on down to um Verse 13, King Solomon then asked for a man named Huram to come from Tyre. He was half Israelite since his mother was a widow from the tribe in the valley and his father had been a craftsman in bronze from Tyre. Huram was extremely skillful and talented in any work in bronze and he came to do all of the metal work. He was extremely skillful. He had been blessed and gifted by God for a time such as this. He was the best one all around. See, Solomon didn't settle for mediocre. He didn't settle for almost. In building the temple, in building his palace, he, he sought the best. And then it goes on talking about these pillars. And this is interesting that he cast these two bronze pillars, 27 feet tall. That's super tall. 18 feet in circumference for the tops of the fillers, pillars. He cast bronze capitals, each seven and a half feet tall. Each capital was decorated with seven sets of latticework and interwoven chains. He encircled the latticework with three rows of pomegranates and decorate to decorate the capitals over the pillars. I say all of that because sometimes we don't always read everything in, in a long list like we have today on all of the, the artistic work, the structure, everything that this, this man did. But the, the bronze pillars, from what I understand, were hollow. They weren't solid. So they, you know, they couldn't move to something this big if it was 
uh, if it was solid bronze. But they, so they had this decorated. So this is put out the front. And so as one would walk in through the doors, they would walk past these pillars. And you see on down into verse um, 21, Kurim set the pillars at the entrance of the temple, one towards the south, one towards the north. He named one on the south, Jacob, and he named one on the north, Boaz. They were shaped like water lilies, and so the work of the pillars was finished. So he named something, an inanimate object, a name of a person. Why would you do that? I have named absolutely nothing. My desk doesn't have a name. It's just a desk. My chair. I mean, nothing in my house has a name. But everything means something in the word. And so Jacken, Jacken, however you want to call it, <clears throat> it means he shall establish. And on the north, Boaz means in him is strength. So as we, as we, as they walked into the palace, they're walking past a continuous uh, statement, if you want to say that, a, 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 you're walking past something that means he shall establish and in him is strength. It was constant reminders as they walked in. And I think that is, is, is absolutely cool. We have reminders on our wall. We have, you know, I have scriptures on my wall in, in pictures and, and we have things around us that can remind us, give us encouragement. Then you can walk into any, almost any room I have and find a Bible. But, you know, I, th I thought that was so neat that, that he did what he did there. And read on through this today, because it's, it's really, it's really just, oh, I just, I just can't, I don't even know, I can't even describe all of this in my own mind because it is, it is so fascinating. Um, I'm going to leave with that for you to, for you to study that and come and find your own, your own nugget out of that today, because definitely there's a lot of gold nuggets literally in, in that for uh, First Kings 7. Let's go into Acts 7. Um, oh, well, I did have a note I wanted to read to you. Uh, well, I guess it's not in. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, yeah, here it was. Okay, the palace complex. This was another note that in my other Bible that I thought was good. The house of the forest of Lebanon, part of Solomon's palace complex, was an armory and a treasury for weapons and eating utensils. Its name came from the fact that so much cedar was used in its interior construction. The hall of pillars was a torch, was a porch attached to the armory or the, in the entrance in the next building. Solomon's Hall of Judgment was the public access. So see, there was a lot of stuff they had going on in there. Um, but it, and then the last statement on there, a great courtyard united these buildings. And don't you know we need a great courtyard to unite our, our temples and government in, in your neighborhood and your family and whatever, and whatever that looks like for you. Okay, so let's jump on into Acts 7, 30 through 50 today. <clears throat> 40 years later, now we're still talking, Stephen is still in front of everybody defending himself because we started this yesterday. It's his speech to the Sanhedrin. And they, they've accused him, they don't like him going around preaching speaking the word, and so he's on trial, and he is quite the speaker. He has gone down through the historical uh, message of, of God being with their ancestors and helping them through. He gets on down to, in Acts 7, 30, he says, 40 years later, in the desert near Mount Sinai, an angel appeared to Moses in the flame of a burning bush. And you remember reading that. But 
as we as we read this 40 years later for Moses, that would make him 80. And eight, eight, the number eight is symbolic of redemption. So I wanted to make sure I had that in there. And then he continues talking. When Moses saw it, he was amazed at the sight and he went over to take a closer look, look and the voice of the Lord called out, I am God of your ancestors, ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses shook with terror and did not dare to look. See, Stephen is reminding them of all of this. And when, when you see all of the patriarchs listed in the scripture like this in the Bible, it's to remind us of the promises of God. Stephen is emphasized one of the main points of his reply to the council that God in his glory and his work was not confined to the temple. God appeared in the wilderness. You know, where, where, where do you go find God? You, he, he's everywhere. He's playing catch with you. He's catching all your cares, no matter where you're at. We go to church to have fellowship with like-minded people. We go to church to, to worship him in a public setting corporately. You can worship from home. But it's, it's not the same. It may be intimate, but you need to have that, that, that fellowship with other believers to support you. And then it goes on to say, then the Lord said to him, take off your sandals for you're standing on holy ground. I have certainly seen the oppression of my people. See, he's claiming my people. I have heard their groans, and this is what he is reminding the Sanhedrin. This is God's people that you are attacking. <clears throat> so as, as he's finishing up his speech, remember that Saul is standing over to the side, listening and watching all of this transpire. In verse 35, it says, so God sent back the same man his people has, had previously rejected when they demanded, who made you a ruler? Even though Israel rejected Moses, his leadership, God appointed Moses with unmistakable signs. This included the burning bush. Go to verse 37. Moses told the people of Israel, God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. Now, this is speaking of the resurrection. <clears throat> um, and then on down to 39, but our ancestors refused to listen to Moses. They rejected him. Is that, is that different today? You know, we, we see him being rejected in so many different levels of, uh, of life today how sad is that 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 we can't even just look out and and simply see the rain coming down and yet we want to have our own way with everything else Stephen one of my notes Stephen is revealing that they are behaving the same way now you know they're all getting really aggravated at this long speech They've heard these stories before. They've probably taught it in their own spin of things. Everything that they would have done would have made themselves look wise and, and knowledgeable and, and the go-to person for whatever whatever's going on. Because see, they had a lot of free advice. <clears throat> Verses uh, 42, then God turned away from them and abandoned them to serve the stars of heaven as their gods. Oh, that sounds like astrology, doesn't it? Do we, do we realize and know that, that that is a satanic thing? If you have anything that deals with that in your home, burn it, throw it away. In the book of the prophets, it's written, was it to me you were bringing sacrifices and offerings during those 40 years and, 
uh, wilderness. No, you carried your, to your, your pagan gods, the shrine of Moloch, the shrine of the god Rephan, and the images you made were to rush, worship them. In, the, in days past, Israel had turned to worshiping stars, planets, preferring nature over nature's creator. Pagan religion allowed them to indulge in sexual immorality and become wealthy through any means possible because they refused to worship and they and obey the one true God. They would cause their own destruction. And you see, God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven. This I mean, that's what is happening today whenever we see these laws and things passed about the, the different cults. Let's call them cults. That's what it is. That our father who art in heaven is not in the center of. What if God just said, OK, uh, you're I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm through with you because of what you've been doing. That, that's the worst case scenario. The idea is both important and awesome. Paul later built on the thought of God giving man over to his sinful de desires in Romans 1, 24 through 32. So the question is, if we reject Jesus today, what will we be given up to? What are we trading in a life of eternal hope and love and, and living with Jesus for that is worldly, temporary, and leads to fire? And then in verse 48, it says, however, the Most High doesn't live in temples made by human hands, as the prophet says. We've re been reading about what Solomon built. He says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Can you build me a temple as that, as good as that? He's talking about the kingdom. Could you build me such a resting place, the kingdom of God? We can't build that, but we can live in it today. First Corinthians 6, 9 says, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who in you, when you have uh, from God and you're, oh, I can't hardly read my little writing. You're not your own. We are the temple. Are you taking care of your temple? Look what all Solomon did for his temple, his palace. It was the best in, of everything. Are you giving, are you feeding your body the best you can possibly give? Or are you feeding it junk? Are you, are you working your body so it will still be a fine oiled machine to go, go out and, and share the word with Jesus? We will finish up on Stephen tomorrow and read ahead. It's, it's a, uh, it's quite a story if you haven't read this already. Uh, let's go to Psalms 128, 1 through 6. And this might have been written by Hezekiah. <clears throat> How joyful are those who fear the Lord and who follow his ways. You will enjoy the fruit of your labor and how joyful and be prosperous. Oh, I did, I, I'm just sounding funny this morning how joyful and prosperous you will be your wife will be like a fruitful grapevine grapevine flourishing within your home your children will be like vigorous young olive trees as they sit around your table that's the lord's blessing for those who fear him may the lord continually bless you from zion may you see jerusalem prosper as long as you live May you live to enjoy your grandchildren. May Israel have peace. This is called a prayer. This is called a marriage prayer because it was often said at uh, 
Israelite marriages. I wanted to jump into my other Bible on that one. Um, this psalmist wrote this, that a good family life is a reward for following God. We, we need to, we really need to share that. Look what, look what's happened to our, the confusion for our children. The values outlined in God's word include love, service, honesty, integrity, and prayer. These all help with relationships. See, whenever we're, we're frustrated or, or maybe, maybe a little, you know, over the top uh, upset, if you roll that back to love and looked at that person through the eyes of Jesus, because he created them just like he created you. See, I can make all kinds of mistakes and I know what I intended. It didn't work out that way. But when you make a mistake, I might think, oh, you're just, you just fell off the deep end. You know, we, we can ex excuse ourselves, but we kind of remember the other person's faults. Relationships, we got to work on a relationship. That way we can continue spreading the word. If we don't have a relationship with somebody, it's really hard to, to jump in there and just talk about God because that's all I hear is you preaching. Let them hear love and friendship and then start with God's word. Okay. Proverbs 16, 33, 31 through 33. Oh, it's a, and, it, and it's a good one. I like it. Gray hair is a crown of, gl of glory. It, gain, it is gained by living a godly life. Better to be patient than powerful. Better to have self-control than conquer a city. We may throw the dice, but the Lord determines how they fall. So you know what? That just tells you, you need to pray. You need to be in the word every day. The word this last week has guided me in, in times that, you know, when I thought, well, I don't, I don't know who I'm going to talk to today. Well, I did happen to have a doctor's appointment this last week. And, you know, when it's just normal checkup, but the lady, the nurse that came and got me had this gloom on her face. And she said, how are you? Well, that wasn't inviting. And I said, I'm fine. How are you? Oh, I've been better. <laughs> okay. You, I, I, you know, I mean, it's a good day. Well, I guess. And I said, well, is it, has anything gone well? And she said, yeah, I guess my, my son called and told me he loved me. And I said, oh, you know what? Stand on that all day long. And, and that's, that's the best thing that could have happened to you. And we, we chit chatted after, you know, she took me back to the room and took my blood pressure and all of that. And you know what, by the time we got done and it wasn't, but you know, just a few minutes of pointing out to the, the great things in her life, that, that, that kind of that gloom was starting to dissipate. And I think, you know, we, we get into this word every day and we see how, how you know, the, the people, our ancestors, the people of the Bible, Stephen, he, he continued talking about Jesus. He continued talking about God. He never, he never went back to, oh, woe is me. I'm getting ready to die. He kept, he kept his mindset on things above. So I think as we go out every day, keep your mindset on things above and look for somebody that you can maybe change their help change their, their thought process. They're at a fork in the road and you are put right there to help them go either to the right or to the left, guide them with just a few kind words. Thank you for joining me today, and I'll be back to see you tomorrow. You have a great day, and if it's raining where you're at, just sit there and enjoy it. I know I will. Love y'all. Bye-bye.